G'day Bat viewers, welcome to this week's PB's Retro Restorations. This week I'm doing the number 267 Corgi Batmobile. Now the 1966 Batmobile is of course the greatest Batmobile of all time, bar none, and anyone arguing differently is just wrong. Now Corgi, I read on the internet, made about 4.9 million of these Batmobiles between 1966 and 82, 83 when they finally stopped making them. So there's plenty of them out there, but good unrestored ones are still pulling good money. So the only way I'm ever going to get one is to do it myself. So let's get crack a lacking and see if we can't make this one batastic again. So initially there's six bat rivets to drill out to get this beast apart. Of course Corgi made these thinking they'd never come apart, so it did put up a bit of a fight. It, it needed some persuading. Okay, so after some gentle persuading, it's finally come apart. I really wanted one of these cars with original bat hubs. Uh, what I ended up stumbling upon, my man Jamo tells me, is one of the very early uh, flat black versions. The first couple of issues came out in a matte black, not the gloss black. Uh, I could spend another half an hour probably spent hours talking about all the different variations on these castings so I won't I'll just show you all the pieces I've got here now that metal frame inside it's riveted in as well three rivets holding it in I drill them out and uh, again it put up a bit of a fight So with that piece out, that gives us access to the rocket launcher tubes. Uh, I can't remember if it held the glass in as well, but it definitely holds the aerial in and the rocket launcher tubes and the wheel for flicking the rockets out. So now I've got it completely disassembled. Here's a shot showing exactly how much of it I was left to work with and with the benefit of hindsight, the professionals out there like Shane H um, and Corgi Bob would probably say there is so many parts missing from this. It's going to cost you a fortune in spare parts, PB. And you know what, viewers? It did cost me an absolute fortune. But I wanted one so bad. And mint unrestored originals are worth a fair swag of money. So this was the only way I was ever going to get a human one. All right, now time to strip the bat paint. I can hear you all screaming at the TV, why don't you use caustic soda? Well, I have had a real problem getting caustic soda around here lately, uh, but the nightmare is over and I have actually found some. So I've been working on this one for so long though that when I stripped the paint, I only had paint stripper. First world problems, I know. Now I'm trying to get the rest of the paint off the casting by hand. You probably also note there that the longer tips Another feature of the early castings are uh, bent on this. I'm going to try and straighten them out. You know how this ends. My man Neil 
from Austin's Wetworks sent me a nearly complete whole second Batmobile which provided parts like the bat phone and other little bits and pieces that I was still missing. Uh, so I think these parts I'm washing here were from that car because I've been working on this one for a very long time viewers and I probably got the timeline mixed up on some of these. But here I am using my budget ultrasonic cleaner. I've shown you in other videos. Given them all a quick scrub and a clean. And I did this with all the parts that I reused. And even some of the ones I didn't reuse. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of the gold paint left on a lot of the parts. But I still gave them a little bit of a clean up with the wire brush. And here I'm just using some standard Tamiya gold uh, to respray all the gold plated parts. So this is me cleaning up the posts, uh, working out which of the metal pieces I'm going to use and cleaning them up before I tap and thread the holes. Okay, so drilling out these interior holes that hold the metal frame on, I blew out the posts on one of them. Uh, I thought this was going to be the end of the project, but I didn't blow them out so bad that I couldn't tap them enough to get enough purchase on the thread of the cap screws I use. So that was fortunate because I thought that was going to be the end of it at that stage.
So I stripped all the crusty chrome off the plastic parts, ready for a refurbishment. But the replacement antennas that came from Neil's car, they're a little bit wonky. They're going to need a little bit extra work before I get to that. Right, so back onto the antennas. What I thought I'd do is make a little bit of a jig out of balsa wood and then use some rubber bands to hold it, to sort of form it to the shape and then hit it with the you know, professional hairdryer tool that I keep in the shed. You know it's not for me head, it could only be for fixing cars um, and try and straighten them out. So you'll see me do that here. Uh, and I think I had a reasonable amount of success with it. Although, I think once they were in the car and installed, that helped to pull them back into shape a bit as well. But anyway... So there we go. Perfect? No? Better than they were? Absolutely. And with a black base coat and some airbrushed Molotow chrome, they're going to look spiffing. Okay, so I didn't film myself doing it, but when I went to straighten out the fin that was bent, I snapped it off, of course. I tried heating it up, it didn't work for me. So I'm using Milliput, set a timer on my Burt Reynolds watch so I can, you know, get the mix between the two compounds right. I stick it on there, and you know what? I think I had a really good result here. It, it took a fair bit of work, but, um,. I think it almost matches the original fin that was okay. You be the judge. There's a fella on the DMC group, go and join, check it out, Shane H, who does the most amazing Batmobile restorations, second to none, they're beautiful work, and I turned to him when I said, what colour do I need for the Bat Hubs, and he said, a fluoro red, so I bought fluoro red, he was exactly right, as you would imagine a Batmobile expert would be, and I'm very, very grateful for his input and advice. I went over the lines a little bit, so I just got my gold Posca pen and just coloured in the edges of the bat. With the primer coat dry, I'm now applying a layer of gloss to me a black. I'm not going to leave it gloss, uh, and I probably could have used semi-gloss to start with, but I'm going another route with this.
So once I get the gloss coat sorted out properly, I'm going to hit it with some Mr. Hobby uh, matte finish clear coat to dull it down and give it that semi-gloss finish that the original had, or something close to it. This is what I ended up with. The replacement chassis that's available, they just make one. One for the whiz wheels and the original because the whiz wheels flame doesn't go in and out, in and out. So you have to cut this little section out if you've got the one that has the flame that goes in and out, in and out. Which isn't a big drama, especially when you've got the original one as a template just to cut that. So, marked it out, dremeled it out, party time! So I'm using my original one, just giving it a polish up with a buffing wheel and some autosol. Ooh, shiny! So here's all our parts, either refurbished, resprayed, repurchased, re-wuzzed, re, re whatever you would like to call it. And now comes the reassembling part. Now this was a challenge. Now I'm sure the professional bat builders out there watching this are cringing at the moment, watching me put it together in completely the wrong order. Uh, I should have put this before that and after the glass went in I should have put the metal piece so I should have put the tubes in and it was a learning experience for me and I had to keep watching Corgi Bob's video time and time again thank you Corgi Bob you're a legend uh, to help me work it out but I got there in the end I wasn't a massive fan of the reproduction aerial that had cost me six bucks and I ended up using the original one because it just flopped about in there loose and it annoyed me a bit. As you can see here, I had to pull it apart again. I left some part out that I meant to put in. I think you couldn't put the steering wheel on the dashboard. Yeah, I almost went to do it again, but anyway. Uh, I had to try squeezing the posts here just so they could hold together. And then I was relying on the metal frame there to hold the posts together after I put the thread back in it, uh, which it did and it worked. Thank goodness. Now 
so one thing I learned from watching other people's videos was that Batman has to be assembled in with the car. You cannot fit him in afterwards because of the steering wheel amongst other things. Robin you can just stick in whenever, that's why he's always missing apparently. Uh. So the chain cutter and the spring, this took me some to and and fro and and fiddle and and flipping. It looks the same, but one side of that spindle that goes into the casting is bigger than the other. And it will only go in around the right way. There's no wrong way, it just won't work. But getting the base and everything on and getting that spring to fit was a challenge in itself. And of course, temporarily forgetting about the laws of gravity and putting the interior bucket in, Batman fell out. The chain cutter that I'd put in fell out. Eventually rescued Batman, fixed the steering wheel, it all started coming apart again. Uh, so this time I got a teeny bit of blue tack, stuck it on Batman's bum and you won't see it and that held him in there while I reassembled it. So the chain cutter, little spring, you've kind of got to fit it in under the base as you're closing it to hold it all together. And it took me a couple of goes, I pulled it apart, fiddled with it, put it back together, pulled it apart, and I eventually got it working. It's still not brilliant though. And of course I bought a replacement spring, but I ended up using the original because it had so much more tension in it than the reproduction. The reproduction one was was ordinary. couple of tests and the chain cutter seems to work okay it's not quite as responsive as it should be but it does work a couple of rolls on the table and the flames popping in and out put a bit of blue tack on Robin's bum too so he wouldn't fall out get in there boy wonder holy blue tack Batman and that seems to be operating although I didn't have any rockets to really check it out properly now finishing touches hand painting the yellow lights. Got these completely brilliant stickers from a dealer I've used before from the UK. They took two months to get to me thanks to the post, but they are awesome. 
they match the fluoro of the wheels, they really look the part. And just like that, as if by magic, with no expense or grief whatsoever, we're done. So here we are back at the start with my $20 Batmobile. That fast became a $120 Batmobile, not including paint and effort and time and blood, sweat and tears. But it was the only way I was ever going to get an affordable, well I say affordable, one that I could afford. That makes it affordable, doesn't it? What an idiot. Anyway, this is what I started with. And this is what I'm left with now. Na -na -la 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 -la. Atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. Holy million dollars, Batman. This Batmobile's now looking a million bucks. A million bat bucks. Anyway, so I'm pretty pleased with how this one came out, viewers. It was a bit of a long and painful journey at times, but I got there in the end. But only got there in the end thanks to the generosity of Neil. Thank you again, Neil, from Austin's Wetworks, for posting me that parts car from the UK, which was probably better than the car I was restoring. But anyway, I couldn't have done it without your help, mate. Oh, thank you very, very much. I'll be eternally in debt to you. So thanks for taking the time out of your day to watch my bat video, I really appreciate it. If you've liked what you've seen here, why not check out one of these other videos that have popped up on your screen. If you'd like to subscribe, just click on my bald head there in the middle of the screen, click the bell for alerts and then you will never miss a moment of the PB action whenever it rears its ugly head. Be sure to give the video a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it, leave a comment if you'd like, I do read them all, and I will see you at the next video. Bye!